Okay class, today we're in section 9.5. Solve quadratic e equations by completing the square. Solve quadratic equations by completing the square. Before, you solve quadratic equations by finding square roots. Now you will solve quadratic equations by completing the square. Key vocabulary, completing the square, perfect square trinomial. For an expression of the form x squared plus bx, you can add a constant c to the expression so that the expression x squared plus bx plus c is a perfect square trinomial. This process is called completing the square. Okay, be sure you read the key concept and get it in your notes as needed. Example 1, complete the square. Find the value of c that makes the expression x squared plus 5x plus c a perfect square trinomial. Then write the expression as the square of a binomial. Step one, find the value of c, that's c right there, for the expression to be a perfect square trinomial. c needs to be the square of half of the coefficient bx. There's your b right there, bx. 5x is really bx. So, you end up with c is equal to 5 over 2 squared is equal to 25 over 4. Remember, c needs to be the square of half the coefficient of bx squared. So the coefficient of bx is 5. Half of it would be 5 over 2, and then you square it. After you square it, you end up with 25 over 4. Step 2. Write the expression as a perfect square trinomial. Then write the expression as the square of a binomial. So x squared plus 5x plus c becomes x squared plus 5x plus 25 over 4. That's that. Now we're going to write it as a perfect, as a square binomial. So we're going to end up with x plus 5 over 2 squared. x plus 5 over 2 squared. In other words, if we were to write x plus 5 over 2, times x plus 5 over 2, we would end up with x squared plus 5x plus 25 over 4. Solving equations. The method of completing the square can be used to solve any quadratic equation. To use completing the square to solve a quadratic equation, you must write the equation in the form x squared plus bx is equal to d. Example 2. Solve a quadratic equation. Solve x squared minus 16x is equal to a negative 15 by completing the square. Solution. Write the original equation. x squared minus 16x is equal to a negative 15. Now we're going to complete the square. We look at the bx term. We look at the b. We take half of that and then square it. Half of 16 is 8. So now we got a negative 8 squared. Don't forget that negative sign. A negative 8 squared. What we do to one side, we must also do to the other side. All right, so now we end up adding a negative 8 squared to both sides. Don't forget, negative 16 divided by 2, or a negative 8 squared to each side. Now, right left side as the square of a binomial. So x squared minus 16x plus a negative 8 can be rewritten as x minus 8 squared. And that's equal to a negative 15 plus a negative 8 squared. Well, a negative 15 plus a negative 8 squared is equal to 49. So now you got x minus 8 squared is equal to 49. Okay, now you take the square root of each side. Now that took place right here, square root and square root. The square root of x squared, excuse me, the square root of x minus 8 squared is x minus 8. The square root of 49 is plus or minus 7. Okay, so now we solve for x. So we're going to add 8 to both sides. Then don't forget, I have two solutions. The solutions of the equations are 8 plus 7 is equal to 15, and 8 minus 7 is equal to 1. Don't forget we sent a plus 8 here, 
and a plus 8 there. So don't forget you got two answers here. So that's a plus 7 plus 8. And then you got a negative 7 plus 8. So 8 minus 7 is equal to 1. Okay, example 3. Solve a quadratic equation in standard form. Solve 2x squared plus 20x minus 8 is equal to 0 by completing the square. Solution. Write the original equation. Next, we add 8 to each side. Plus 8 here, plus 8 there. That's going to cost, cancel out, and we bring the 8 down. Now we have 2x squared plus 20x is equal to 8. We're going to divide each side by 2. Why? So we can factor out a common factor and make it easy. 2 goes into 2, 2 goes into 20, and 2 goes into 8. Okay, so 2x squared divided by 2, you're left with just x squared. 20x divided by 2, you're left with 10. 10x. And then 8 divided by 2 is 4. Okay, next we're going to complete the square. We're going to complete the square. So we look at that 10x. We take that 10x and we divide it by 2. Take the 10, divide it by 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5. So you're left with 5 squared. So now we're going to add 5 squared to both sides. 5 squared on this side, 5 squared on that side. Now we just complete this square. So we're going to write this trinomial as a binomial. So x squared plus 10x plus 5 squared becomes x plus 5 squared. And we remember that if we multiply x plus 5 times x plus 5, we will come out with x squared plus 10x plus 5x squared. Then we're going to add 4 plus 5 squared. 5 squared is 25 plus 4 is 29. Then we take the square root of each side. The square root of x squared, excuse me, the square root of x plus 5 squared is x plus 5. The square root of 29 is going to be plus or minus the square root of 29. All right, now once we get x plus 5 is equal to, is equal to plus or minus the square root of 29, we're going to subtract 5 from each side because we want to solve for x. So we end up with x is equal to a negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 29. Once again, minus 5, minus 5. x is equal to a negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 29. So the solutions are negative 5 plus the square root of 29. And that's going to be congruent to about 0.39 and negative 5 minus the square root of 29. And that's congruent to about a negative 10.39. All right, now you know what they did here, right? They just used a calculator and they computed the square root of 29 and added it to a negative 5. Same thing here, to compute the square root of 29 and then subtracted it from a negative 5. Example 4, solve a multi-step problem. Crafts, you decide to use the chalkboard paint to create a chalkboard on a door. You want the chalkboard to have a uniform border as shown. You have enough chalkboard paint to cover six square feet. Find the width of the border to the nearest inch. Solution, step one, write a verbal model, then write an equation. Let X be the width in feet of the border. Area of chalkboard in square feet is six. And that's equal to length of chalkboard in feet, 7 minus 2x, times width of chalkboard in feet, 3 minus 2x. Okay, now if you're wondering where to get the 2x from in both of these situations, all right, you see what it said the length of the chalkboard is 7? This is length, all right? And it just told you the width of the border was x. So, I mean, this is x. That means there's an x here. And there's an X right there. All right. So there's also an X coming down right there. So X, X. What's X plus X? 2X. All right. Same thing for the width. You got an X here. That means you also have an X. Over here. Okay, it's a little crooked, but you see what I'm saying. And um, so there's an x on each side. So it's going to be 3 minus 2x.
All right, so now step two, solve the equation. We get 6 is equal to 7 minus 2x times 3 minus 2x. We multiply the binomials. When we do, we get 6 is equal to 21 minus 20x plus 4x squared. All right, now for those of us who've forgotten that or never learned it, real simple. 7 times 3, 21. 7 times a negative 2, a negative 14x. A negative 2x times 3, a negative 6x. And then a negative 2x times a negative 2x, that's a positive 4x squared. 21 comes down, there's nothing to add to it. A negative 14x minus 6x is a negative 20x. And then the 4x squared comes down for the right. There's nothing else to add to it. Okay, after multiplying, we're going to subtract 21 from each side because we know we're going to be completing the squares. So we have to have it in the uh, completing the square formation. So minus 21, minus 21. Minus 21 here, that cancels. 6 minus 21 is a negative 15. So now you got a negative 15 is you can do 4x squared minus 20x. All right, now we don't want the x squared term to have any value in front of it. So we're going to divide each side by 4. So dividing by 4 here, we're left with just x squared. Divided by 4 here, we're left with a negative 5x. 20 divided by 4 is 5, so a negative 5x. And then, of course, a negative 15 divided by 4. We're going to leave that as a negative 15 over 4. Okay, now we're going to complete the square. We look at our bx term, and our b here is a negative 5. So we said negative 5 divided by 2. A negative 5 divided by 2. That should remind you of the very first example. Negative 5 divided by 2. And that's going to equal to 25 over 4. So here we got 25 over 4 and 25 over 4. All right, which means we can write this side, which is the right side, as the square of a binomial. So x squared minus 5x plus 25 becomes x minus 5 over 2 squared. x minus 5 over 2 squared. On this side, we get a negative 15 over 4 plus 25 over 4. That's going to end up equal to 5 over 2. All right, our denominators are the same. Once again, we're going with basic math to be sure that you understand everything. Our basis, I mean, our denominators are the same. So 25 minus 15 is 10. So 10 over 4, reduce that down, and you end up with 5 over 2. That's where that came from. Okay, now we take the square root of both sides. The square root of x minus 5 over 2 squared is x minus 5 over 2. And then the square root of 5 over 2, we're going to leave as plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2. All right, since we solve for x, we're going to add 5 over 2 to each side. So plus 5 over 2 on this side, plus 5 over 2 on that side. So we end up with x is equaling to the square root of 5 over 2 plus, oh, excuse me, we're going to end up with x is equal to 5 over 2 plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2. x is equal to 5 over 2 plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2. The solutions of the equations are 5 over 2 plus the square root of 5 over 2 which is congruent to about 4.08 and 5 over 2 minus the square root of 5 over 2, which is congruent to about 0.92. It is not possible for the width of the border to be 4.08 feet because the width of the door is 3 feet. So the width of the border is 0.8. 92 feet. Convert 0.92 feet to inches. To do that, that goes back to some old dimensional analysis that we learned early in the year. Once again, dimensional analysis that we learned early in the year. 0.92 feet times 12 inches over one foot. Feet cancel out and we end up with 11.04 inches. Once again, 0.92 feet. We're going to convert inches to feet. Inches on top, feet in the bottom so they can cancel out. Multiply going across and then divide, in this case by 1, and we end up with 11.04. So the width of the border should be about 11 inches.